care of you and today i'm going to do the second video of our series on a uh, how to build this invoice generator so for today's episode we're going to just do the power automate flows which are going to do all the automation behind this so in the first video we created these lists so we got the two lists in sharepoint now for the second one we're going to create the power automate flow so let's just get straight into it so if you come to power automate um and you want to create an automated cloud flow and then we will just call this invoice generator okay and then what we want to do is we want to trigger this when an item is created in sharepoint so we'll create that okay so what we want to do is we want to connect this trigger to this invoice system demo list here that we created in our site in the first video so if you select the drop down it should be available so i can go to forms there and then we've got our invoice system demo so I'll check we've got nothing on this so then the next step we want to get items so if you do get items now the reason for this get items is this is going to we're going to attach this to the other sharepoint list that we created so we'll go to forms now and then we're going to connect it to the invoice system demo tasks so these are all the tasks that are added here in the separate sharepoint list this we're going to get all of those items in this flow so what we need to do here is we need to filter the query so it only pulls the the tasks relating to the invoice that's being created um, and to do that what we want to do is we want to filter query and we want to type in form id lowercase eq for equals and then if you put an inverted comma and then we want to get the id of that created item so that's going to match the form id for the task that I created uh, so that's that step so the next step we want to get the file content using path i'm just going to comment i'm just going to rename this in fact so we can keep track of what's going on so get tasks related to invoice okay so then the next step that we're going to do i'll just close these is we want to get file content using path So the reason for this is to get the logo to put on the invoice. So this is to get the logo that we put on this invoice here. And so what I'm going to do is we just go to forms again. So sorry, what I need to do is we need to add this to the actual site. So I'm just going to go to the form site here. Uh, and if I just come to the documents folder, again, this, this image that we need to pull, it can be just an open link anywhere as long as you've got access to it for this uh, example i'm going to put it in the documents folder of the form site and as you can see i've already added it here so i've called it logo png and that's my logo which i'm going to pull into the pdf so if i just go to that i'm going to go to the form site open the file path go to shared documents and then select logo there so there's the image getting that and i will just rename this to be logo okay so for the next three steps we're going to initialize some variables oh let me just fix that so we're going to initialize our first variable which will be called table bar and we're going to make this a string and then leave that empty this will all make sense shortly So we're going to initialize another variable. And we're going to call this one data URI. So the whole point of this data URI is we have to do this for the company logo because we have to convert it into HTML. For it to be able to render into the pdf so if you just try to put the the content of that logo straight into the pdf when we generate it and then um, in the onedrive steps it'll have an issue so this is what we need to do to get that image mapped across um and in this data uri i'm just gonna we're gonna oh, sorry let me just name this so we'll call it data uri or lowercase i there i'm gonna make this a string and 
in this data URI, I'm just going to go down to the expression here. And what we want to do is we want to use a data URI function. So it should be. I can't see it, so I'll just. So it should be data. Yeah, so we use data URI. And then what we want to do is that when you open your parentheses, it should open the other one. If you click here back to dynamic content, and what we want to get is the the body. So we want to get this file content here. So that's the logo that we brought in. So we're getting that file content. That should be in the data URI. And then just click OK on that. So that'll add that function. Um, so next, we are going to initialize another variable. We are going to call this just going to call it HTML string. And what we're going to do in this is we're going to concatenate that data URI. So what we are going to do here is that open brackets, beta commas, ing. Oh, no. Still typing it. What I'll do is I'll put this block of code into the into the link to the, in the website when the um, the blog post goes up so if you just check the description of this video i'll have a link to these pieces of code as well as all the html um, and that data uri one as well but what we're basically doing is we're doing a concatenation and then this is a little block of html uh, so it's to, to generate an image in html then that comes out of the html gets the variable of that data uri so what we created here and then it opens it again. So that's basically generating the image in HTML. Uh, so that's that step. So then the next step, we are going to do an apply to each. And in that apply to each, we are going to get the value of the get items. So getting all those tasks. And then what we want to do is we want to append to string. Now, again, there's, there's many ways that this could be made. This is the way I've made it. So as I said, I'm sure many people might have some um, different ways that we could do this. This is just the way I'm doing to achieve it. But what we're going to do here is we're going to, with the supply to which we're going to loop through all of those tasks, and we're going to append it to the table variable. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy and paste this text in, and then I'll explain what it does. And then, as I said, I'll put it in the post and if you check the description. But basically, what we're doing here is in the apply to each, we're looking at each of the get items for those tasks. And in what it does is as it loops through each record, each task, it gets the description, it gets the unit, and it gets the total amount. So it, it goes each through of these. And what it does is it, it adds these pieces of text, which is HTML. So I've just sort of pre-populated this. Basically, we're putting these into table rows in HTML so that when the HTML generates the PDF, it's already structured into a table. Um, and we're already referencing the correct IDs for that format. And so it looks nice when it comes out to the HTML. Um, so as I said, I'll put this code into the post. Um, so that is that let me just rename this so we've got this understood create html table all these tasks and then the next step we are going to use onedrive And we are going to call create file. Right, so what we need to do here is we're going to use the create file step for OneDrive. Now, what this is basically, I'll just rename this. 
So what this is going to do is it's going to create the HTML file. For conversion. So, so what you would need to do is if you need to go to your the OneDrive that you have got set up. Um, and what I did is I created a folder in here called PDF Flow. Um, so if you just create a folder in your OneDrive, and then when you click this folder path, you'll see that uh, PDF Flow folder. I'm just going to click on that. That's going to save it. So then for the file name, this can be anything that we want. Uh, we can just put new form .html. Um, so this, what this is going to do is this is just going to create a HTML file. Now, what we want to do next is a concatenation, right? So we want to put a concatenous file content. And what, so as I say, what this is doing is we're creating the HTML file into OneDrive. So all of that data we want to have as HTML so we can generate that form. So this is all of the HTML to create this whole invoice. Now, what I've done is I've put a link in the description to a, a post on our site. So I was going to do a separate video to go through and build HTML by scratch, but that'll just take so long. So what I've done is I've just stuck all this up onto our blog post so you can just come and take it. So if you literally just copy and paste all of this, so from the start and cut right down to the end, this will just, it, this is all the HTML to generate that invoice. Now, while we're looking at it, so I've just control C that. While we're looking at it, I just want to, quickly point out that if you can see within the HTML, we use this inverted comma and then a comma to jump out of the HTML. And then that's when it references our variables that we're passing into the HTML. So as you can see, there's the bill to there. Um, so I just want to make you aware of that. Obviously, if you make some slight changes to this system and you're going to start adding or moving fields, this is where you want to pull your variables in. So as you can see as well here for the sale amount, we're getting the trigger output. So that's the sale amount when it's it's uh, the, the very first step in the flow when it's it's created and then we're just getting that same amount so that's the variables being passed in so what i've done is i've just copied all that so i'm going to come back into here if you just go to expression and click Control v so that should paste all of that html and then click ok that should show the concatenation there now so there's all of our html uh, so for the next step what we're going to do is it's another step in OneDrive, so it's called convert file using path. And I'm just going to rename this as well to be um, PDF. So, this, so what this step is going to do is it's going to go and get our HTML file that we've just created here, and it's going to convert that to a PDF. Um, so if I go to PDF flow, Ah, sorry, apologies. So instead of selecting the folder, what you need to do is if you come to this create file step here, so in the file path, and then we just want to get the path of that file that was created from this step. So you put the path in there, you leave that as PDF, and that's that step. And then that's everything done. So the final step, we just want to send an email. So I'm just going to send this to me. Uh, in the subject, so I'm just going to put the invoice and then I'm just going to put title on the very first step in the body. I'm just going to put hello, please, invoice. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to show the advanced options, and then we just want to add that attachment to this email as well. I'm just going to put the title.pdf. So what you need to do is you can put whatever name you want for that attachment name, but just make sure you put .pdf in the title. So what we want to do is in this attachment content section here, we just want to get the file content of that step, convert file, generate PDF. So I'm just going to put that there. And that should be everything that we need for this flow. So I'm just going to save that. So production invoice generator. So what I'm going to do is this will be the end of this, this video. What I'm going to do is I'm then going to upload the next video where we build the power apps. 
And then once we've built the power app, that's when I'll do a full run through. I'll see if there's any bugs that have occurred and we'll hopefully fix that there and then. But yeah, I hope this video has helped someone. Please like and subscribe to the channel and take care. Thank you.